Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today we're going to finish sowing all our seeds for our winter garden in this rather experimental uh, season. Let's go. In my area, normally the things we do in my garden, I do before most of the people north of me. I'm in zone 9A. That means when I get started on my spring garden, I get started early. And that's a benefit to my channel is this is a teaching garden and it allows me to put things in before most of the people in the country will need that information. Therefore, they can benefit from that. But in my fall garden, in my winter garden, I'm behind everybody else. Most everybody's got their fruits coming in up in the north part of the country and uh, the middle parts of the country, they're, they're growing lush. But down here in the subtropics, well, it's November, it's the middle of November and I, I'm still sowing seeds. But I wanna see if we can get a crop of various kinds of vegetables and roots uh, throughout the, the winter. If we have a mild winter, it should be no problem. Normally I can grow through the winter. I've grown uh, cabbages and cauliflowers and peas and all kinds of things, radishes and root crops, carrots, all through the winter and harvested them uh, up until I needed to sow my spring crop. So if we don't get a big freeze this year, we should be fine. So let's go and finish sowing up uh, our garden with seeds. I'll show you how to plant some peas. We're gonna plant some rutabagas, some kohlrabi, and we're just gonna finish up this garden and then I'll give you a little tour of how things are looking. Well, this video was made over the course of several days and as you can see, I've had to amend my beds with some Dr. Earth's organic all-purpose fertilizer. This is a really good fertilizer and I really like it, so I bought some big bags. And we're just gonna spread that around before we prepare this bed. And then we're going to plant some various uh, uh, some peas in there and some, some various root crops. And yeah, well, let's just go along and see how it goes. Going to grow some peas, specifically these sugar snap peas. See if we can get them to come up and grow through the winter. All right, I've got my bed made up here. My garden bed has been harvested of sweet potatoes and I'm ready. This is the last bed I have to plant for my winter slash fall garden. Technically it's winter garden since everything's gonna be coming up in the dead of winter here in zone 9A on the Texas coast. I think we can get some sugar snap peas to come up. They do fine through the frost through the winter at least until we get a real deep freeze and I don't think we're gonna get one this year. It's not in the forecast at least. I think if we get one, it'll be in February like last year, and that should be enough time to get some of these peas up. They are, uh, they come up in six to 10 days. Their maturity is 50 to 70 days, so that should be enough to give us a harvest. Man, these are so good. By the way, I got my seeds at Seeds for Generations. This is a family run business, and if you use the link down below, uh, you'll be supporting my channel and supporting a very good business. Seeds for generations, good stuff. Now in these beds, I have harvested sweet potatoes and they went deep. I had to turn up those beds a bit more than I really wanted to. And in doing so, I brought up a lot of the clay, a lot of the lumps that were down below the, the nice fluffy soil of my uh, prepared raised bed. So I've got a lot of lumpiness on my soil. I'm gonna use a little trick that I use with some, uh, most of my crops actually. I'm just gonna put a little bit of potting mix, a real fine mixture of potting mix right along the surface where I'm going to sow my seeds. And I'm going to sow into that and that will allow my seeds to have good contact with the soil and they'll germinate better. This uh, potting mix will uh, hold on to moisture a little longer than big clods, you know, big clumps of clay will. And there won't be as many air pockets in the soil. And so I'll have a better chance for germination. I'm just going to sow right into that mixture. So let me go lay some down. So the seed packet gives me all the information I need to uh, sow these seeds properly. I'm just going to take some of these peas. There's about 25 in here. You're supposed to plant them, uh, let's see, an inch deep, or half an inch to an inch deep, and two to four inches apart. I'm going to go with four inches. And we're going to put a trellis along here so that all this long row of peas can grow up that trellis and give us some goodness. I'm just going to stick them down into this potting mix squeeze over, move over four inches, pinch over, another four inches, 
pinch over. And I'm going to repeat this all the way down until I have expended all my seeds here. So I'm going to place them so I can see them and then push them in when I come back through. So here's the pea. I'm going to push it down and just pinch over it. Remove any big heavy clay clods. Push it down, pinch over. Push it down, pinch. Push it down and pinch. I can feel the clods of clay down in there. So this uh, potting mix being so fine is going to be a, a real good head start for these. A real good way for these to stay in contact with fine soil and moisture. This potting mix is very wet. I feel a big clod. Let me move this seed for a minute. Get that big clod of clay out. There we go. Last one. Push it down. Cover. Alright. Our peas are planted. Whole long row of them. Let's water it in. Now I've watered them in really well. I want these things to be sitting in moisture. I've put them in the evening so they can sit overnight and there's not going to be a lot of evaporation going on. Because these peas, well they're hard, they're dry, they need to absorb a lot of moisture in order to wake up that, that uh, germ in there so they can germinate. And so a lot of moisture and I'm going to keep watering these and keeping the soil moist, moist until I see them come up. So well that's as easy as it gets. Now we got to think about trellising. Well, we're going to try some rutabagas for the winter garden, see if we can't get some. Yeah, I know it's late, but hey, we can try. I'm going to make some rows here. I've got peas all right down there. I have some radishes here, so we'll just make some, some furrows here. I'd like to get some rutabagas. Rutabagas are a nice uh, carb crop. They're like a good potato um, combo between a potato and a turnip. Lots of carbohydrates there. So we'll just come in here, make us a furrow. I'll kind of put them in, kind of randomly just sprinkling them into this furrow. I'll just jump and cover these over. Kind of just pull the furrow back on top of itself. And we'll see what we get. Hard to imagine that these little seeds just kind of sprinkled through here are going to come to something of value. But man, that's just the beauty of a seed, isn't it? Okay, here's what I've done. Right here. 100 pound Japanese radishes. We'll see if they get to 100 pounds. Don't think they will. More like three to four pounds, maybe five, maybe 10. We'll see. All right, these are rutabagas. And along here we have peas. Really good. Well, the dill is looking healthy. And as you can see the garlic all coming up. I'm going to be real happy to have some garlic this year. Thanks to uh, Oxheart Gardening. Rachel over there, she showed me how to plant this and well, looking good. Her spacing is a little bit better than mine was, I think. We have carrots. You can see the pockmarked craters where my dog walked through here. The thing is, even if a dog walks on your seeds, they're still going to uh, likely germinate so yeah these are carrot carrot seedlings and I've got a lot of them in here if I find any bare spots I'll just sprinkle some more seed in it but uh, yeah nice huh takes carrots a long time and I've been a little bit nervous plugged in some collard greens and they're coming up as well little seedlings right there just eight of them just to have some greens here and I've got all this area I'm gonna put some planting in here as well here are the daikon radishes and we put two in each hole and you can see they're even starting to form their first set of true leaves there 
they're growing really fast. And over here we got a weed poking up. Let's get rid of that dude. So yeah, daikon radishes. Uh, looking forward to these. Gonna come in soon and snip off at the ground the one, the weaker of the two seeds that we put in each hole. I've got some daikons right here too. Let me show you. This is another type of daikon. We'll want to thin those. And right here, I have some Choho Tatsoi. It's nice Asian green here. And we'll be thinning these out as well. You can see they're very small seeds and I had to sprinkle them in this area. And we'll just come through and thin them. And then over here, I've got some white gem daikons. And obviously we'll need to thin those. Those are kind of icicle shaped daikon radishes. Brassicas doing well. Growing quickly. Got something munching on that one, it looks like. Yeah, maybe, maybe we're gonna have to get down there and look for a caterpillar. What I'll do if I see munching going on out here, I'll spray BT, which generally kills off all munching caterpillar, soft-bodied uh, caterpillar type things. Yeah, I'm pleased with the progress on these. Here's what happens when you don't put a fence around your fresh garden bed. My dog generally goes in my garden beds and I gotta yell at her to get out and she's been over here. This is where I planted those peas and Phoebe just went and walked right over it. What you gonna do? Why you gotta go in my garden, huh? Why? What's in there that you like? Here's our strawberries we planted the other day. Looking good. They got a fresh rain tonight. Got another couple of them here. But these, if you don't know, these, these have self-seeded. These are they're called electric daisies by some folks. It's the toothache plant. You take that blossom right there, that yellow part, you chew on that, and it will numb your mouth. Yeah, I gave you an update on my goji berries at the end of my strawberry video, but there's my goji berries leaning way over there. We're going to need to try to trellis those up and cut that bucket away from the roots which have gone down. You notice we killed off all our fire ants, and the ones that were very, very deep came back and built another mound in here. So we're gonna have to get the orange oil again and come in here and wipe out this mound of fire ants. I don't want them in there. I'll have to watch this plant over here. This plant over here was planted where the orange oil was sprayed and it doesn't look very healthy. So we may have to be very careful with our orange oil or just let the fire ants live. Hmm, we'll see. This is my thornless blackberry. I forgot which variety this one was. I don't think it still has its tag down there, but it's grown well. This is one year of growth from a tiny little plant about that big. So we hope to get some blueberries, some blackberries next year. We'll see. I have one more sweet potato bed and you can see they're still blossoming. This is middle of November and the sweet potatoes are still blossoming in there. This was just a couple of starts I put in here and uh, they migrated and rooted themselves in this former pepper. There's a pepper plant that used to live here. There it is. And they've rooted right here and put down roots, so we might have some sweet potatoes in there as well. There is an unwelcome guest in my garden. Let's put him down there and humanely dispatch. Holy moly, it's middle of November and it feels hot out here. Most of that's just solar energy. Um, the ambient temperatures in the shade are in the 70s today, the high 70s. But uh, yeah, it's winter and uh, we've planted lots, a lot of stuff. So in this video, we've planted peas, we've planted some uh, rutabagas, and while you weren't looking, off camera I planted some kohlrabi. And yeah, everything's looking great in the garden. Things are growing really well. Uh, I've got some more room right here. I've got a little bit of room and I don't know what to grow. Give me some suggestions. Zone 9A, something that'll grow through the winter. Something that is not a brassica. I had brassicas in this bed. I don't want to put anything in here uh, that's a brassica. I need something, maybe a root crop, maybe a leafy green, something that's, uh, you know, maybe lettuce. Yeah, whatever. I can plug it in right here. That's, the, that's all I have left. So there we go. That's what we're going to try to do in this garden. We're going to try to grow through the winter and see what we get with some of these late planted seeds. Will it work? Subscribe and find out. 
If we haven't earned your subscription, well, we hope that we can. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and yeah, happy gardening to you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.